so we have uh, the slope of the temperature profile uh, in the preheat zone leading up to the reaction zone uh, is, is given by a rho u C p T i minus T naught divided by K um, let us keep in mind that we are actually hunting for u this is what actually we do not know and this is what we are actually looking for and we are hoping that we will be able to actually get this when we try to uh, use the interface matching condition um, between the two zones. Um, so what we have to do next is of course uh, integrate the second equation uh, and then also get a slope from there evaluated at x equal to 0 plus and then equate these two and, and that therefore we expect to get the u that is how that is how we are uh, going to go about this that is how uh, that is what is looking down the pipeline uh, we are going to be doing but at this stage we now have a problem the problem is that uh, we, we, we assume we, we suppose that uh, we have t equal to t i uh, in both the boundary conditions uh, leading up to x equal 0 minus on the one side and x equal to 0 plus on the other side but we do, do know what it is all we are basically saying is the temperature has to um, match and uh, we have to now plug in the value of the temperature T i over here um, and we do not know what it is. So how the question basically is how do you deal with the situation of not knowing the temperature right. So there are a couple of tricks about this uh, we will talk about in both the cases uh, we, we try to now replace this temperature by a known temperature uh, without a, without incurring too much error. So the, the the bottom line basically is without incurring too much error. So what we are going to do from this side looking from looking from the preheat zone towards the reaction zone um, at the interface between these two zones is to now say that this is equal to rho u approximately rho u cp tf minus t naught divided by k. Why would you do this well um, basically the temperatures that we are actually given or TF and T naught TI is an unknown uh, and we are not really making any bones about trying to find that out in the first place um, we are trying to actually see if we can replace the unknown by something that is known without incurring too much error. So the last part without incurring too much error is where the crux is so let us look at how TF de departs from TI um, uh, so the, the answer is if you now <coughs> look at the preheat zone and the reaction zone. basically you are having the temperature T i very close to T f the only difference between these two is the temperature climbs up a little bit more within the reaction zone to level off at a constant slope at the end of the flame thickness all right. So you could say that you are you are almost there except that the slope is not 0 all right. So you have a finite slope a finite non-zero slope that we are trying to look at. Uh, but it is it is uh, um, uh, the, the value is value is pretty small. Uh, well, if you, if you want to be a little bit more careful about this picture, uh, we we got to we got to keep in mind that the 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 uh, preheat zone solution is going to actually give you a exponentially increasing solution. is what you are looking at so effectively we are, we are talking about a, a value ti that is here and the preheat zone solution would go like this and the, the reaction zone solution would go like that right so that is what we are uh, looking at. So ti the point is the point here we have to keep in mind is this is T0 so relative to relative to T naught so look at this difference or this difference relative to T naught Ti is as close to Tf it is not as if like Ta is generally close to Tf the question is how close is it is quite close relative to T naught that is like we are kind of looking from here and then seeing that those two temperatures are very very close to each other all right. So that is the trick that we are playing in the preheat zone and I will and I will show you how to play the trick in the reaction zone um, where we do not know Ti and we will be integrating in, in this region and then and uh, if you are not anticipating the kind of trick that you are going to play you must be having your eyebrows raised at this stage how am I going to actually how on earth am I going to 
have T i be replaced by T naught okay because that is that is what I need to do okay because I will be in this I will be in this region I am going to go from T i to T f and T and T naught and T f for what what is given T i is unknown. So in this case I am replacing T i by T f in that case I will have to actually replace T i by T naught Whew, can I ever do that we will we will see how it works huh. So it's so wait you wait with bated breath on how we are going to play that trick um, so let us let us just uh, go ahead with uh, rea so we, we now have this so we will just go ahead with um, the second equation to in integrate it once so the way we want to do that is um, taking considering 2 rewrite it is it has um, 2 dt by dx times 2 which is like if you now multiply this equation by twice of dt by dx all the, all the way through then uh, it is possible for us to now write this as d by dx of dt by dx the whole squared equal to negative 2 dt by dx w q divided by k right uh, if you want to just check we can see that if you now differentiate this you get a 2 dt by dx d squared t by dx squared so um, and then the 2 dt by dx gets cancelled on either side. So if you now do this the reason is we can now have exact integrals on both sides um, so integrating integrating uh, once from uh, 0 plus 0 plus to uh, infinity along x okay along x we get um, dt dt by dx the whole squared evaluated at x equals plus z plus infinity minus dt by dx the whole square evaluated at x equals 0 plus equal to you are going to have um, this integrated from 0 plus to infinity mi minus 2 dt by dx w q divided by k times dx. So you could actually say this is not really an integral with respect to x anymore it is an integral with respect to t okay. So again you do not have to worry about and then of course what you have to do is you have to now realize that uh, the limits of the integral have to be substituted in terms of temperature instead of uh, the, the uh, x location value therefore uh, we can write this as uh, minus integral um, T i to T f 2 q w divided by k dt now just in case you are one of those people who is impatient uh, about what is going to be the outcome and what, are, what is it that we are gaining out of this uh, uh, I do not know if you remember I told you that the biggest difference that we are going to get between what we are doing with all these equations rigorously or, or seemingly rigorously in a mathematical sense when compared to the phenomenological energy balance that we did earlier on is we got all the dependencies right uh, the only thing that we are going to gain is a square root of 2 okay so the, the a factor square root of 2 uh, which, which is different from the phenomenological ex, ex expression square root of 2 is 1.414 so, so you are about 41 percent off in the phenomenological um, analysis that is still within the order of magnitude you see so uh, 1.4 is about of the order of 1 so, so uh, we, we, that was an order of magnitude estimate so for an order of magnitude estimate that was that was a, that was a pretty good job. So question is where are we getting the square root of 2 the answer is we are actually having this 2 showing up here right because we now multiplied by 2 dt by dx and then keep in mind that this is going to be a square and I am going to equate this to this right. So if I now I am going to have to equate this to this then I have to take a square root so I get the square root of 2 coming from right here at this particular uh, step okay. So uh, now notice that this is going to be 0 
because uh, you are you are having your dt by dx go to 0 at, at x, as, as x tends to infinity. I also want you to point out that we are actually having the x go from here uh, that is the origin and this is very important for us to think about as, as engineers x equals minus infinity as far as the preheat zone is here whereas x equals plus infinity as far as the reaction zone is here okay. So this does not look like very far away when compared to that it is not like we are talking about minus infinity is being here and plus infinity being there and so on no that is not what we are really bothered about okay. So infinity is something that is very, very kind of flexible it is it is very contextual right. So the reason why we are saying this is actually going to be a very small infinity when compared to that is because you see that you are going to have a steep variation in the, in the reaction rate within this region it is going to rise and fall within the small region and then you have to now take very small steps to capture that steep rise and steep fall okay. So that means to say we are ultimately trying to actually integrate this W with respect to T and you have to get an area under the curve of W as it rises as the temperature changes only a little bit between Ti and Tf okay and that rise and fall needs to be done over very small steps and if you now keep taking very small steps you pretty much reach uh, you, you get tired and then you say well I think I have reached infinity if you have even if you have not gone too far <laughs> okay. So uh, that, that is essentially asymptotics for you so this is what is called as a inner zone this is what is called as an outer zone this, this zone has a different length scale when compared to that okay. So we are, we are look, what, what, we, what we mean by length scale is a characteristic dimension over which we would march. Um, so that is exactly what we, what we are talking about when we are now saying that this is actually going to 0 there. So uh, which means we now say uh, dt by dx the whole squared x equals 0 plus is equal to integral ti to tf to q w divided by k dt so q is the heating value k is the uh, thermal conductivity those are like properties of this uh, uh, system so w is the one that is actually varying with temperature okay and so this integral essentially is uh, of w with respect to temperature keep that in mind uh, so let us call this b versus uh, let us call that capital A and uh, we now want to actually equate A and B except A is actually the derivative uh, at, uh, at x equals 0 minus whereas uh, this is B is actually square of the derivative at x equals plus so we have to equate this with square of that okay. So uh, A squared equals B implies um, we now say rho u the whole squared cp squared see how I am actually squaring things the rho u actually would, would, would indicate the mass flux so you want to just keep it together uh, cp squared tf minus t naught the whole squared divided by um, k squared equal to 2q divided by k integral ti to tf As a matter of fact um, we should have thought about trying to get rid of Ti in favor of T0 right here because we did that when we were trying to get A while getting B we should actually try to get rid of Ti we will do that in a minute okay. Uh, so that is what we should be looking at but now the cat is out of the bag we will now try to figure out if, if that it is not going to be very difficult for us to replace Ti by T0 with, with, without much error so that is something that I am going to show you or uh, talk about pretty soon. So here we go uh, how to simplify this a bit further so rho u the whole squared um, equals 2k uh, q divided by cp tf minus t naught integral ti divided to, to tf 
W D T. Now note that Q equals C P T F minus T naught right or, or this is actually the adiabatic energy balance. So this, this was the heat released in the chemical reaction which is essentially the difference the negative of the difference in the summation of uh, standard heats of uh, uh, formation of products to the standard heats of uh, formation of the reactants and this is actually the sensible enthalpy rise of the mixture between in initial and final temperatures right and in fact to, to be able to notice this um, made a mistake I guess I guess. So uh, you have a CP squared TF minus T not the whole squared so it is mainly to actually cancel this off that we try to replace Ti by Tf in a hurry back then okay so you might you might you might, you might, you might think both ways you should if you, if you did if you got rid of Ti there you should have got rid of Ti here but if you did not get rid of Ti here why did you get rid of Ti, ti, TI there okay so we wanted to get rid of Ti there because we want to cancel this and uh, we, we could still go on with this okay uh, so uh, let us keep going on and see where we, where we want to make a change. Um, so therefore uh, rho u squared equals will now uh, for the first time introduce this notation uh, rho naught SL squared uh, this is basically notation we could basically say rho u is a constant in one dimensional steady state right so rho u is the same as rho naught u naught rho u is also equal to rho infinity u infinity all right so the reason why we are saying so many things is the way we want to actually look at this as the laminar flame speed okay sl stands for the laminar flame speed okay is always relative to i shouldn't say always but we have to specify this the laminar flame speed is relative to the unburnt um, reactants okay when you now say rho naught SL that means the, the laminar flame speed is relative to the unburnt reactants that means to say you now have a flame that is propagating into the reactants and the question is you could be actually sitting on the flame and getting the reactants to come into you at the same speed or the other thing that you can think about is you now have the flame that is go propagating and then the products are actually flowing out you see. Now if you are actually looking at the flame speed relative to the products you will get a different speed when compared to if you are looking at the flame speed with respect to the reactants because the reactants and the products are having different speeds themselves. Therefore it is always quite important for us to note what the flame speed we are talking about and usually we are talking about a flame speed with respect to unburnt still reactants all right but rho u is a constant so a, a less controversial uh, term is what is called as the mass burning velocity okay so mass burning velocity or mass burning flux if you, you can you can you can call it different ways laminar mass burning flux is essentially rho u and it didn't matter whether you are actually talking about it with respect to unburnt mixture uh, reactant mixture or the burnt products because it's going to be rho u is going to constant you see so when you are talking about a flame speed then it is it is it has to be specified that we are talking about it with, with, with respect to unburned um, reactants so there we are so you could uh, you could now write this as uh, 2k divided by Cp Tf minus T naught integral Ti to Tf WdT and we are now going to say so SL is equal to 1 over rho naught K over CP or, or 2K over CP um, 1 over TF minus T naught integral T i to T naught W d T. Now could approximate 
I am saying could I am not saying should okay we could approximate integral ti to tf w dt as integral t naught to tf w dt without much error because this is an integral and what we are talking about is if you now look at how the w goes right we are looking at essentially the area under this curve well not exactly this curve this is this would be w dx we are looking at w dt this is w with respect to this temperature variation right and uh, you can you can easily see that the w is actually zero outside this region so you might as well actually start integrating from any temperature upstream you would not really care okay there is no hardly going to be any contribution of w there okay so therefore it is because it is showing up within the integral then it is possible for us to actually replace T i by T naught otherwise it would have been much harder in this kind of situation like algebraic it, that, that would be much harder there, there is no way you can justify that but this is reasonable this is pretty good why would you want to do this uh, you do not have to do this as I, as I will show you um, soon but why would you want to do this what would we get out of seeing this you see that 2k divided by Cp 1 over Tf minus T naught integral T naught to Tf W dt what do we have? this is in fact very very similar to the first expression that we obtained phenomenologically except for two things one the square root of two factor that I have been saying we will get and as a, and we are we are right there getting it starting from this point onwards we get this two there and then of course it is a square therefore you get a square root of two in the final answer the next is a little bit more important which is originally we simply said we had SL equals 1 over rho naught integral 2 K W divided by sorry did not have the 2 K W divided by C P and the question was what was the W if you simply had a K W by C P then we assumed that the, the W was actually prevalent over the entire flame thickness delta and as if it was a constant all right but that is not really the case. Uh, the W varies uh, significantly within this distance in fact it is actually lying very low up until the reaction zone and then starkly increases and then decreases within a very narrow region called the reaction zone. So the major effect of the rigorous mathematical exercise is to recognize that W varies within the reaction zone and take its variation as it is. So we are not really replaced we are not really plugging in a w that is a constant and then the question that we had was what would be the constant and we now came up with this uh, came up with this um, um, combination called w not infinity right where w not infinity refers to evaluating the w uh, the reaction rate with reactant concentrations far upstream and the flame temperature downstream right that is what not infinity was referring to and that would actually give you the most the, the highest value that was that was possible whereas if you now have an integral like this what does this look like the reason why we wanted to substitute for ti as t naught in this integral was to actually see how what this looks like this is now beginning to look like more of an average you see so this is an average um, reaction rate between the two temperatures the, the, the limit temperatures T naught for the reactants and TF for the products. So if it is possible for us to actually take an average um, reaction rate then whatever we got uh, previously with a square root of factor 2 to thrown in is what the uh, rigorous analysis gives us based on the schwab zeldovich formulation right okay. So can we do a little bit better is it possible for us to not necessarily make this approximation okay and then we, we just plot on saying that let me actually see how this 
Ti kind of thing is going to work out. Okay. The under root, the limits of integral is Ti to Tf. The Up here? Yes, sir. Thanks. When you have too many Ts, this is what happens. Huh? We want to see if we can evaluate this integral that means we now have to explicitly take into account the dependence of W on temperature and what is that dependence that dependence is essentially given by the Arrhenius law where we are now saying uh, W is now going to be A e to the minus capital E over R, R U T times concentrations of the reactants. Okay. Now keep in mind that the concentrations of the reactants are actually going to fall like this and the AE to the minus E by RT times the concentrations is now going to give rise to a certain variation with temperature which is a bit peculiar. So as a simplification we want to bother only about variation with respect to temperature which means we will um, as, as a first step we will now say uh, for a zero order reaction. W equals A e to the minus E over R U T and that is it. Of course all along we have been using W instead of omega, omega is the um, number of moles per unit time per unit volume okay that is how the reaction rate is going to be whereas W is actually the number of uh, kilograms per uh, unit time per unit volume. And therefore, the the difference is you know you know you now have to have a molecular weight thrown in here, but we suppose that A con, con, contains that as well. So let's not worry about um, uh, that explicitly. But whenever you're u, using W or omega or any of these things, you have to be very careful about the units. Okay, and uh, this is this is many times where you you get into troubles with numerical calculations. So keep this in mind. We are still working on a mass basis. And this is this is all we are going to have for a zero order reaction. That means we are not going to worry about how the concentration varies uh, along. All right, which means we are. What are we actually looking for? Since we have done the phenomenological uh, expressions, right? We have we have some physical intuition about what what's what to expect. If you are going to do only the zero order reaction, not worry about the reactant concentration de decrease into the reaction zone then all we are basically looking for is this is going to look like the average is the peak value w naught infinity divided by beta that is the correction that we are basically aiming for okay. So is it possible for us to actually show that this average reaction rate is going to be like w naught infinity divided by beta that is what we did before when we said if, if we wanted to keep in mind the variation of W with respect to the, the flame thickness and, and say that it is varying mainly within this small region and therefore we scale this distance by as delta divided by beta that is what we did okay. Then we got SL equals 1 over rho naught integral K W naught infinity divided by beta CP. So we, we so that essentially we are looking for this uh, average integral if you evaluate it as it is without, without replacing Ti by T naught is it possible for us to show that this will be somewhat like W naught infinity divided by beta is what we are basically looking for. We are not looking for further corrections which are taking into account the reactant concentration uh, decrease within into the reaction zone and still further corrections with non unity Lewis numbers which we did before okay uh, because th those things are still not possible with what we are doing now okay. So now um, in this in this case uh, see that E over R U T T F particularly T F is typically a large value which is uh, around 10 which means it is one order magnitude more than unity keep this in mind because uh, most hydrocarbon fuels you have uh, E's of the order of uh, 30 to 
40 kilocalories per mole that is again a mixture of units you are not talking about joules per kg it is calories per mole there so you got you have to make that conversion uh, this is typically how the values are given and uh, Tf is anywhere between 1500 to 2000 Kelvin or even upwards and uh, Ru is equal to 1.98 calorie per mole Kelvin right. So if you now take these values you can you will find that this is of the order of 10 which is uh, quite larger than 1 and uh, uh, we are going to use that fact. So what we want to do is if I equal to uh, integral Ti to Tf W dt right then this is equal to Ti to Tf A e to the minus e over rut dt what we want to do is we want to basically be looking at a variation in temperature only within the small region right that small variation is what we what we want to do. So Midas will actually look at the temperature as a departure from Tf rather than the actual value okay. So when you now talk about departures then you, you start magnifying that value rather than uh, look at high values and then varying over a small range uh, there. So set your new variable sigma as Tf minus T and uh, then sigma i becomes Tf minus Ti uh, and of course sigma is now going to go to 0 when T becomes Tf so sigma equal to Tf right um, and we also have to find out what T is like so T is Tf minus sigma equal to Tf times 1 minus sigma divided by Tf and uh, we want to note that sigma divided by Tf is much less than 1 right. So sigma is a very small value it is a departure from Tf uh, it is not going to be large because T itself is not going to it is going to vary only from Ti onwards to Tf and Ti is quite high very close to Tf in the first place so this difference is going to mean that T uh, sigma is going to be very small when compared to Tf. So then how is your e to the minus e over Rut going to uh, get changed or transformed um, into in terms of sigma is exponential minus e divided by Ru Tf times 1 minus sigma divided by Tf. So that is approximately exponential minus e over Ru Tf times 1 plus sigma divided by Tf. Now these kinds of things are all sort of tailor made for approximations we should we should sort of get an intuition about how these analysis are done. So if you now start thinking about a sigma as a small quantity then that is like a sitting duck for a binomial approximation okay. So whenever we have a chance we approximate okay <laughs> we do that in our lives most of the time by the way. So we do a binomial approximation and then it also gives you this factor which we have a, a, a feel for from here right. So we get all these things isolated then uh, then i is equal to you can pull out these things ti to tf. Um, e to the minus capital E sigma divided by RUTF squared dt uh, whereas our integral is with respect to sigma 
So therefore we should write this as e, a e to the minus e over r u t f integral sigma i to 0 e to the minus e over e sigma t f squared d sigma. Now that is a little bit of a cumbersome uh, thing over there. So what you could do is let uh, not very cumbersome it is possible to deal with this but still if you want to now call this as e over e sigma over r u t f squared um, and uh, beta i is uh, e sigma i divided by r u t f squared then i is e to the minus e over r u t f r u t f squared divided by e it is pulled out and uh, 0 to beta i e to the minus beta d beta. Now this is so what are we expecting uh, what are we expecting to happen what you are basically saying is that we are looking for this integral which is what we started out with to approximate w naught infinity divided by a different beta than what we have used here unfortunately okay and that beta was e times um, t f minus t naught divided by r u t f squared t f minus t naught is already here. So we should be looking for something like r u e divided by r u t f squared in the denominator to couple with this in order to get you the Zeldovich scaling factor and then we should get a w naught infinity w naught infinity is essentially the w evaluated at the reactant concentration levels and product temperature levels we are now doing a zero order reaction which does not depend uh, whose reaction rate does not depend on the reactant concentrations anyway so we do not have to worry about the not part of the w naught infinity we do not have to worry about evaluating it at the reactant temperatures what we have to re reactant concentrations what we have to be looking for is to evaluate it at the product temperatures which is what this is. So this is the reaction rate uh, expression evaluated at the product temperature right and then this is there coupled with the tf not tf minus t naught in the denominator you are going to get the Zeldovich scaling factor in the denominator. So this all, of all by itself is giving you for what we thought was the average reaction rate uh, giving you w naught infinity divided by beta. So we are fine so all we need is a unity out of this integral sure enough that is what we are expecting to get. So this is going to be like 1 minus e to the minus beta i where we are now saying that beta i corresponds to sigma i and sigma i corresponds to um, tf minus ti which is a very small quantity right when compared to tf therefore we are now going to get rid of it and say this is approximately equal to 1 right. and then uh, from there on we should now be say, saying therefore SL is equal to 1 over rho naught integral 2k divided by CP A e to the minus E over RUTF that is W not infinity for a zero total reaction divided by tf minus t naught times r u tf squared divided by e so e times tf minus t naught divided by r u tf squared is the zeldovich scaling factor showing up 
the denominator of w naught infinity so we essentially are getting back the same thing again uh, except for the square root of 2 that's come out again right so this is typically how we are able to retrieve the answers that we were expecting for this case what I want to point out um, just just point out not really go through this uh, because we are just spending too much time on this uh, you should look up so this is looking like what we got before right you should look up uh, how to actually do the rigorous analysis on taking into account the reactant concentrations then what that means is we have to now relax this assumption on a zero tolerance reaction and notice that W will now depend on the reactant concentrations so for a first order concentrate first order reaction you will have a um, concentration of one of the reactants coming into picture for second order reaction you are going to have concentrations of two reactants coming to picture uh, so all those things have to be uh, brought into account and then the next thing that we talked about was the Lewis number effect okay. So what you will find is you can actually uh, when we did the Lewis number for example we found that uh, and, and also the reactant concentration you got this W naught infinity divided by beta power m for the where m is uh, the um, exponent in, uh, corresponding to the order of the deficient reactant right um, and then you also had a Lewis number on in the numerator so we should be able to retrieve uh, those, those things uh, if the 0th order uh, reaction assumption is relaxed is relaxed uh, and non unity Lewis number of uh, reactants considered right we can retrieve the expressions obtained earlier on a order of magnitude basis here with a square root of 2 factor right so we can get this and then what would we um, suppose then so we notice that for let us say uh, for for a nth order reaction right W goes as P to the N right because you will have the Arrhenius expression times the concentrations as many as the number of reactants are and the order uh, the, the, the reaction depends on and for that much order you are going to have each concentration uh, contributing a pressure and therefore you are going to have a p to the n for the nth order reaction for the pressure dependence right. Now what you have is uh, rho naught in the beginning right so rho or rho naught goes as p I do not want to say p naught because we are assuming the pressure to be constant it does not matter whether it is p naught or p infinity okay we are just talking about a constant pressure more or less a constant pressure deflagration here therefore your SL is going to go as p power n by 2 divided by p n by 2 coming from having 
w depend as p to the n and then under square root therefore you are going to have this as p to the n minus 2 divided by 2 right or you can say n by 2 minus 1 so n by n minus 2 divided by 2. So for a second order reaction second order reaction SL is nearly independent of pressure. Keep in mind order is a global quantity it is it is it is valid for a global reaction right or if you are able to actually represent a scheme of chemical reaction steps uh, uh, um, elementary re reaction steps in terms of a global reaction. So it does not have to be an integer so typically for most what we call a second order uh, reactions let us say hydrocarbon gaseous hydrocarbon oxidation your order of the reaction is going to be somewhat like let us say 1.8. So it is not going to be exactly 2 right so there is a reason why I am saying nearly so we find that there is a weak dependence on pressure so if you now think about an n that is like about 1.8 you see you are going to have an inverse dependence on pressure right that means as the pressure increases the SL decreases okay that is in fact true that is what that is what we actually observe but it is a weak dependence. So we are now beginning to talk about dependences of S on various factors so what we just mentioned was pressure which was obvious um, what we have not really worried about is how it depends on let us say initial temperatures okay uh, and uh, what we will see is this is primarily the dependence there and uh, SL is going to depend on a lot of other factors mainly through W okay so if W is going to um, depend on initial temperature it will depend through Tf okay. So we will now talk about these things in the next class.